Our encounters were far from linear in terms of order. But what is order in war, in conquest, in chaos and bloodshed? We dance across the stars in a seemingly eternal stalemate as we watched each and every one of them burn. My sister and I often united to feast upon the disorder and destruction left in our wake. I've seen such pandemonium, such beautiful turmoil written within our stories that intertwine. I await the perfect moment to continue our dance. <sighs> They have many names, many titles, and many faces. They would always find themselves in my way. On my path within my story, whatever they call themselves, the other, the family, or the doctor, we will always be locked in combat. As long as I await our final battle, I find myself clinging onto the memories of old memories from the distant past and the far future. Our timelines are untangling and being unwritten like dust on a mirror fading away. Out of time, figuratively and literally. It all began when she was a mere child, a foundling. Lost and cold, it ended with the Doctor locking me within this containment cell located on an ancient battlefield, destined to be locked away as a secret since the dawn of the universe itself. I'm merely by my time and waiting for the right moment. We had many battles, the Doctor and I. Our encounters were far from linear in terms of order, but what is order in war, in conquest, in chaos and bloodshed? I remember the one with the dark beard and the feathered hat. The one with the clean suit and almost yellow hair. The one with the much wider hat, clean, shaven, with much longer hair. That one was a soldier, a worthy opponent indeed. A bald man with bushy eyebrows wearing what looked like a sack. The one with the goatee. We found ourselves locked within a stalemate for some time before we both were locked away in prison. The one with the tricorn hat brought his wife to our battle. Then there was the one disguised as an indicator. There was one who claimed to be on the Supreme Council, sent to kill me. <laughs> How thrilling our battle was. <laughs> So many little doctors, and yes, they would always stand in my way, whether they wore a top hat or a coat with an impossible amount of buttons. <laughs> Our story will always intertwine, and yet I feel them being unwritten, rewritten, every battle, every conquest. I sense him returning. And I am known to him, a threat beyond even my comprehension, awaits. Christmas Day was often a depressing time for the Doctor, whether it be solving a trippy murder mystery within Edward Grove, or his debauching time on Bowie Base One. They rarely ended happily. There was the occasional Christmas in which it did though, whether that be having Christmas dinner with Rose Tyler's family, or Jackson Lakes. It was this Christmas that everything changed for the Doctor, and it all began as most of his adventures did. 
with him alone within his ever so faithful companion and trusted ship. The orange light from within the time rotor illuminated one side of his face as he stood beside the console unit exhausted from his previous adventure, in which he had just about survived a demented abomination of a hairdresser droid that was out to get him. It wasn't an adventure that he looked back on in a particularly fond light, but at least he lives to tell the tale, he thought to himself. The Doctor couldn't remember where he was originally planning to go and who he was with. The name Charlie came to mind. The memory of her was fading away, but she sounded important. There was another memory within his mind. Something about a penguin and the bar? But the Doctor simply moved around his ship with a new destination in mind. His memories often got muddled. Perhaps it was just a sign of old age, he thought. It was far too easy to look back. To fixate on the past. Bygone Christmases. If there was such a thing as a ghost of Christmas past, he would have a field day with the Doctor. Maybe the future would yield something more agreeable. A festive shindid with the Axians, maybe. Perhaps. Anything just to spend one Christmas on a rational planet. Or hell. Even Earth. Random date. 3033. No big wars happened then. At least as far as the Doctor knew. Somewhere nice and quiet. He placed his hands on the flight controls. The peace of the moment was suddenly shattered. The Doctor was violently forced out of his melancholy by the shrieking sound of the TARDIS alarm. Rushing to the console, he began conducting checks, glancing at the scanner as his fateful ship was flung from side to side, sending him flying. Grabbing hold of the controls, he pulled himself back to a standing position. Days and confused, the Doctor tried to get a reading on what had struck his ship. As the course revealed itself, he could hardly believe what he was seeing. His past once again catching up with him in front of his very eyes. The fabric of space-time expands to an impossible degree as it begins to bend and unravel around the TARDIS. Nothing and everything coincide as strands of time begin to intertwine like a spider's web. A white light surrounds the ship, a gateway of sorts. Whatever was on the other side of this gateway gave the Doctor an extreme sense of deja vu and he knew it wasn't a pleasant memory he was currently reliving. Dread began to consume the Doctor's thoughts. Something about this memory told every atom of his being to just walk away now. But that was impossible. Not only was the flux imminent, but the duty he was on about to perform stayed strong in his mind. Never run away from a situation that could endanger so many. Stand fast and firm. Face this with as much bravery as you can. That's what the Doctor told himself. He braced. The flux began to converge with the TARDIS, following it as it did all that time ago, as it relentlessly began to swallow planets surrounding the blue box. Tracing origin point? Calculations appeared on the scanner as the Doctor dragged the screen towards him. Several origin points. But this isn't what happened last time. At least I don't think it was. The doors of the ship began to open, but unlike last time, the TARDIS is fully functional. Origin points located. We can't be there. It can't be. Bewildered and afraid, Doctor pulls on several levers. What does the flux have to do with the time war? I suppose. There's only one way to find out. The cloister bells began to slowly chime as the Doctor moves around the console. It's time to visit an old friend of mine. You up for it, old girl? The Doctor began frantically pressing buttons on his ship as it began to materialise in and out of existence. Surrounded by explosions, he began to collapse towards the floor. The universe began to crumble around his TARDIS once again, and all he could wonder, what was causing this to happen once again? The flux was almost ancient history for this Doctor, and yet the fear within his eyes was the same as it was when he encountered it last time. Chaos in its purest form. Not again! I won't let this happen again! He shouted as the TARDIS successfully made its way into the vortex. He grabbed his hammer from beneath the console unit and smacked it across the console as hard as he could. Merry Christmas, Doctor, whispered a voice in the distance, a voice that the Doctor instantly recognised. As he could feel a shiver go down his spine and goosebumps on his arm, he 
could feel the hair on the back of his neck standing up as the coordinates seemingly plotted themselves as they diverted from the original planned destination and decided upon going further back in time. The doctor then hit the floor unconscious while trying to reach for the console.